Hello everybody, my name is Sucrose Mother, and I'm going to be showing you guys a deck tech on Omnath Locust of Rage. Now if you guys don't know who Omnath is or what it, this card does, it is a 3, 2 red and a 2 green for a 5-5 five five that has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 5-5 five five red and green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. When Omnath a locus of rage or another elemental you control dies, Omnath deals 43 damage to target creature or player. So, if you're not familiar, this is technically a lands deck, landfall. So, in the deck, we do have uh, 38 lands. To uh, trigger this, we have a few tutors in here, play extra lands for turns, stuff like that. Um. We're gonna go through some utility lands here first before we get to the rest of them. Uh, this is mostly basic land heavy because that's what we're tutoring for, so we don't have much of a uh, non basic lands. I think there's only like 16 in here that are non basics. Um, let's see here. So we have Strip Mine. Uh, you sack it and destroy target land. You can use this to play it a few times and start stripping people's lands. Wasteland does the same thing except it only does it towards non basics. Ancient Tomb is just a free, you know, soul ring on a land, technically. The pay, it's a, you pay two and deals two damage to you. Cavern of Souls protects your commander. Since Omnath is uh, a big boy, you know, he's a seven drop. It does cost a lot to, you know, cast him over and over again, so it's uh, best to have him not countered. Scavenger Grounds, you're going to be playing against graveyard people, so having a land that actually exiles all graveyards is going to be helpful. Uh, it does hurt you a little bit because in, with my build, we do uh, actually utilize our grave quite a bit, so... But I mean, eh, it's not too bad. It'll hurt other people more than us. Command Beacon, you know, we can replay lands from our grave and stuff like that, so... Uh, for Killer Command, if our Commander dies, you know, we can just recast it for 7 again. It's not too big of a deal. Prismatic Vista, it's a tutor land. Just, just for any basic that uh, we have in our deck. Now... We have, I think, 10 uh, fetches in here. We have a uh, Prismatic Vista, Wooded Foothills, Misty Rainforest, Once of Teeth, Breton Catacombs, Blessing Mire, Scalding Tarn, Erin Mesa, and then the rest is going to be our lands that we can basically tutor for. We have one Stomping Ground, which can uh, choose any both colors. We have nine mountains, and then we have, I think, 11. Uh, forest 12 13 forest I forgot so the rest are just gonna be forests and stuff and then we're moving on to our next thing which is basically the lands that help us you know basically trigger our landfall abilities searching for basic lands put them into play and just wrap it out so we can get on that out usually this deck gets on the bat about maybe turn three turn four so that's pretty good. Harrow is an instant 3 drop. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a land. Uh, second text says, search your library for up to two basic land cards, put, put them into the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Next up is Roiling Regrowth. It's basically the exact same thing. The only difference is that it puts the basic lands into play tapped. We have Far Wanderings, since we do fill our grave a lot with, uh, you know, lands and instincts and sorceries. We have Far Wanderings. This says, search your library for a basic land card, put it into the battlefield tapped, finish up your library. Then it has Threshold, which says, instead, search your library for three basic land cards and put them into play tapped, finish up your library. So it's basically three instead of one, like all the other ones usually do, at least all the three drops. Nisa's Pilgrimage, search the for up to two basic forest cards. Reveal those cards, put the ones to the battlefield tap, and the rest into your hand and shuffle your library. It does have spell mastery, so if you have an instant or a sorcery, at least two of them in your grave, uh, it has an additional effect, which this one says you get to search your library for up to three basic forests instead of two. So you basically be knitting two forests to your hand and one to the field. And the reason why it's in here is because usually we do sometimes need to have lands in our hand in order to play extra lands. Because we're not able to play from our grave, so that's why it's in here. Kudama's Reach, search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards, put one to your hand and into the different tabs. 
and uh, cultivate. They do the same thing, really. It's just an extra one. Explosive vegetation, it's three in the green. Search your library for the two basic line cards. Put them into the battlefield tap, then shift your library. Pretty classic ram spell. They also have a migrations path. It's basically the exact same thing. The only difference is that this one has cycling, which I think is the better one. In case you, um, what's it called, um, you lose all the basics to search for in your library, uh, you can use this card draft because there, is, there has been times where I've gotten all, a lot, almost all the basics out and uh, it's hard to do landfall stuff, which is why I included the uh, addition of using my grave a lot. And uh, I'll explain and show how I'll do that later. So this is a pretty cool one. Uh, escape shift. This is pretty much a wind card almost. So if you have Omnath out, Jesus, the lighting's horrible. Uh, if you have Omnath out, you can go ahead and uh, use escape shift and sacrifice any any number of lands. Search your library up to that many land cards. Put them into battlefield tap and shift your library. Now, escape shift is cool because you can tutor for any land. It doesn't specify which one, so you can search for more fetches. You know your utility lands. Uh, usually what I like to do is a uh, sacrifice uh, like six basics and then maybe like three uh, fetches to come into play with them. So that way at least I don't screw myself over too much. I, just, I at least have some basics in play and then I can use the fetches to trigger the uh, landfall stuff. And because some of these instants and sorceries make our stuff come into play tapped, uh, we have Amulet of Vigor. It is a one drop, and uh, it says whenever permanent enters the battlefield, tapped and under your control, untap it. So it does have to come and tap, which is really spice. Our next segment is going to be uh, a few more ramp spells uh, that are not exactly pertaining to the instance of sorceries rendered. We're going to have Soul Ring. You know the classic. We have Mana Crypt. We have a Burgeoning. Uh, Burgeoning is cool because it's a, it's a one drop for green. Whenever an opponent plays a land, you may choose a land card from your hand and put it into play. So, uh, if, if you have like four lands in your opening hand and Burgeoning, you play turn one. Uh, next rotation, you should have at least four lands on the field. So that's pretty cool. Lotus Cobra. It is a... Oh, uh, cover this in a green. has landfall, so whenever land enters the battlefield in your country, you create one mana of any color. This guy's pretty cool for a ramp. We have all these fetches coming into play and stuff like that. Uh, it just triggers us so much and just wrap easy. Same thing with this guy. He's a tireless provisioner for two and a green. Has landfall again. Whenever land enters the benefit and you control, create a food token or a treasure token. Uh, what's more important here is just the treasures, honestly. You uh, use the treasures to make mana of any color, fixes your colors and stuff. Treasures, I mean, um, food tokens there, uh, you never use them. Or at least I never do. Just helps you gain life, uh, life, so. Exploration is a one drop for green with an enchantment. You play additional land on each of your turns. So, just instead of playing one line, you play two. Next we have a Dried of the Elysian Grove. Two and a green. It's an element. I mean, it's an enchantment creature nymph. You may play additional land, and it just color fixes your stuff, making your lands into basics of any color. Uh, next is a uh, two and a green. It's a uh, Zeus the Lost Basiki. It's a human monk. You may play two additional lands on each of your turns. So it's so one, you know. So you'll be playing basically three a turn. If you have them, other ones in play, you know, four or five stuff. So. Mina and Den Wildborn. Uh, two red and a green. This is way better. Uh, if you play additional land, you play. Uh, uh, the second ability helps you play additional lands, because let's say you have no more lands in hand, you pay uh, a red and a green to return a land you control to your hand, and then uh, you get something trample. You don't really care about that too much, because you just want to play ex extra lands, so you just use that ability to start playing extra stuff. Oracle Modaya. Uh, I would consider this a form of ramp also and uh, card advantage. It's a three and a green. You may play additional land each of your turns. Play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play lands from the top of your library. So I think that's pretty, pretty nice. If you have no lands in hand, no tutors in hand, 
you just start playing off the top of your leg. Right? Greater good. So, uh, we know Omnath's first ability says, uh, actually, no, sorry, second ability. Whenever an uh, Omnath or another elemental you control dies, it does three damage to a target creature or player. So, we're going to go over some sacrifice outlets. Uh, there's a total of five. Only three of them sacrifice creatures. The rest of them, the other two is for your lands. So, greater good is the two in a green green. Enchantment, sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to sacrifice creature's power, then discard three cards. So if you make an elemental, you sacrifice it to greater good, you, you draw five cards, discard three, so you're always netting at least two cards in your hand. Next is uh, Perilous Forest. It's a uh, three and a green green. Enchantment, you pay one, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a uh, basic land card, uh, a basic land type, and put it into, into play tapped, then shuffle your library, so... Basically, each elemental is just paying for themselves, technically. Or, you know, each creature is paying for themselves. Um, it just really depends if you have this paired with, like, the, um, a Lotus Cobra or the, uh, Tireless Provisioner. It, it just keeps on going until you run out of basics, basically, so it's really, really good synergy. Goblin Bombardment, this is pretty much a good finisher. Uh, you, it's a uh, one in a red enchantment, sacrifice a creature. Goblin Bombardment does one damage to target creature or player. So if you have um, an element on play, you sacrifice it. Uh, because of Omnath, it says you do three damage, but because of Goblin Bombardment, you do additional one, so you're always doing four damage at least. And, um, yeah, it's pretty cheap, so it's pretty good. Uh, Sylvan Safekeeper. Uh, he, wait, it's a one drop. For green, it says sacrifice the land. Target creature you control gains shroud into end of turn. I don't really honestly care about the shroud part. I just care about sacrificing a land. Um, so basically, the reason why these guys are important is because there's times where I'm always using the instant sorceries to you know fetch for all my lands. So I, I just gets to a point where you basically can't search for anything anymore. And uh, with this deck, what I noticed is that um. I always utilize my fetch lands a lot, and they're the ones who basically search, get all my lands out of my library, and, and not most of the instant sorcery. So what happens when you can't search your library, and you're only playing lands from your grave? You sacrifice sil you sacrifice lands with Sylvan, and then you just replay them. So he, he comes in handy that way. And then we all have uh, a Zurin Orb, the zero drop artifact. Sacrifice a land, you gain two life. Uh, this land has literally saved my life. <laughs> I uh, I had a scape shift because I was down to two life. I scape shift uh, ten of my lands and uh, and res no, it was a scape shift. What did I do? No, okay, I didn't scape shift. I was doing a, a sp I was doing a spell that returns all my lands from the grave. And in response, uh, while holding priority, I sacrificed 10 of my lands to gain 22 life, bring them into 24. And then all my lands came into play um, untapped, uh, and then I had that tireless provisioner, and I made 10 extra mana, and I just kept going to save my ass and building blockers and shit because uh, I was about to die. <laughs> so this card is really cool. Uh, that's my memory with this card. One of my favorite uh, spells in the deck. Now, since we are sacrificing lands and stuff, getting all of our fetches, we needed them and everything. I'm going to go over some of our graveyard recursion in our deck. Because we do use our, our grave a lot. We have land grave recursion and we have grave recursion for our other spells. Uh, Life of the Loam is a 1 and a green. It says return up to 3 target land cards from your graveyard to your hand. So if you have your 3 fetches in your graveyard, you just uh, bring them back to your hand, replay them, create fetching again. Uh, it does have Dredge 3, so it's, it's a replacement effect for when you draw. Uh, instead of drawing, you may mill yourself for 3, and then return this card to your hand. So, it's uh, pretty good. You just keep uh, utilizing it. And since you're milling yourself with it, we have a response to get back some of your spells from the grid. Splendor Reclamation, that's the spell I was talking about that uh, helped me come back. Uh, it's a three and a green. Return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, uh, you have like six, ten lands in the grave on this in the field, or another landfall creature in the field. Just bring them back and it triggers all of them. 
World Shaper is the exact same theme of this last card I showed you. The only difference is that it is on a creature. It's 3 and green. And Merfolk Shaman for a 3 3. Uh, it says whenever a World uh, Shaper attacks, you may put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. I don't really care about that. Mostly when every time he comes out, I, he, gets, he gets sacked. So. Uh, whenever, his second text says, when a World Shaper dies, put all land cards from your graveyard onto the battlefield tab. So yeah, that's where he, um, he comes in handy when we have our sack out, sack out what's on the field there. And if anything, we can just let the elemental die and then use the em elemental trigger ability from him right here to just do 3 damage to him and kill itself. So. Not too bad. Crucible Worlds, it says you may play lands from your graveyard as though they were in your hand. So it is a 3 drop that does only that. Really good. Uh, Ramon Excavator, it's a two and a green. It's basically, it's exactly the same thing. Let me play around from the graveyard. This guy is cool. It's Ancient Green Warden. He's a four and green green. He's an elemental, so if he does count for Omnath's second ability, he has reach. You may play lands from your graveyard. And the third text says, if a land enters the battlefield and causes the trigger ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So you play a land, let's see he's on the field, Omnath's on the field, play a land, you make two elementals. Uh, Lotus Cobra's on the field, play a land, you make two more mana. He just He's just a doubling season, but for landfall abilities. Regrowth. It's an... Sorcery, it's a one and a green, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Usually use this for like uh, some of my wind conditions that go to the grave, um, some ramp spells, sometimes even a fetch line because that's all I needed to just keep going. Really cool. Uh, let's see here. Eternal Witness, the exact same thing. The only difference is that uh, it just, it's a creature. I'm an ETBs, you know. Return the target card from your graveyard to your hand. Green Modern of Marasa. Now this guy's pretty cool. It's a four and green green. It's an elemental. When he enters the battlefield, you may return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Exact same thing as the last two cards. The uh, what what's different also is that um when he dies, he does the exact same thing. So we have your sack outlet. You just sack him and get a uh, card back. Um, let's see here. Sometimes I, whenever I use him, he just enters and goes straight to the grave. We have a uh, broken bond. So now we're basically moving on to our removal spells. Uh, we're gonna go through uh, cre uh, artifact enchantment removal, and then to creature, and then to permanent. So we have broken bond. It's a one in a green sorcery. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, and you put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. We have hull breach. Choose one, destroy target artifact, or destroy target enchantment, or destroy target artifact and target enchantment. So you get two for one, or just one. The easy two drop. Crossing grip, two and a green. Instant has split second, so as long as this spell is on the stack, players can't cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. No one can respond to anything as soon as you cast this spell. It says destroy target artifact or enchantment. Force of Vigor. Now this is pretty cool. It's one of my favorite uh, removal spells. It's, it's basically always free. Uh, it's, it's a two and a green green instant. If it's not your turn, you may exile a green card from your hand rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Destroy up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. So you can do either or, or to do two of the same type. Really good. Blasphemous Act. Uh, most it's a uh, eight and a red, so it's nine drop. Always, usually, basically, cost one red because the first text says this spell costs one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield. Blasphemous Act is thirteen damage to each creature. Whenever I use this card, it's used as removal for everybody. But usually, what happens is I use it as a finisher as well, which is why I include. Uh, at least some blood wipes for this one. Because if you have like 10 elementals from your landfall abilities or more, you just cast Blasphemous Act and then you just kill your own board. 
to benefit off of the Omnath second ability just to, just to do like if there's 10 creatures on the field uh, that's 30 damage you can, you can basically one shot somebody in that instant or if you're low enough and you just spread the damage so that's pretty good chain reaction almost the same thing it's uh, 2 and a red red chain reaction deals x damage to each creature or x is the number of creatures on the battlefield so pretty cool Uh, here's our permanent removal stuff now. We have Chaos Ward. The owner of target permanent shuffles it, uh, it into his or her library. Then reveals the top card of his or her library. If it is a permanent card, that he or she puts it in the battle. So, just to remove something that's uh, very threatening. Let's see if someone has a freaking rule mob on the battlefield or a uh, Taxis, you know, Vorinplex. You don't want that, get rid of it with Chaos Ward. Beast within, destroy t it's a two and a green, destroy target permanent, it's controlled, put the three, three green beast creature to the end of the battle. Uh, this is just really good. It gets rid of anything as well, takes care of lands, you know, chaos work, I think. This one's lands too. Yeah, target permanent, so this one takes care of lands too. Uh, you, mix, you give some of the beast, but it won't matter because you're always making five fives because of Omnath, so really good. I think this is our last removal spell. It's called Ruination. Destroy all non-basic lands. Because our deck only has six non-basic lands that we actually use, that stay on the field we use. It doesn't matter to us because the rest, of the other ten non-basic lands in our deck are uh, fetch lands. So we just using them to uh, get rid of our stuff and. Um, you're, bas you're always putting the lead with this card, so that's really cool. Uh, usually people in like LGS, they have a lot of non-basics, so I'm always the one who's gonna win because of uh, all my basics in play, which is why we have so many. Next up is our win conditions. We have Avenger of Zenicar, it's a 5 and a green green. When he enters the battlefield, create a 0-1 green plant creature token for each land you control. As landfall, when a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a 1 1 counter on each plant creature token control. So, uh, when I play them, I usually get like at least 8 to 12 plant tokens. And then I'm still able to go ahead and play another land into play, so that's really good. So, he always he's a good win condition, I would say. Uh, Rampage and Bailoffs for 4 and green green with Trample. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 4-4 green beast creature token. So every time you're playing lands, you're making a 4-4 beast. Almost like Omnath, except you, instead of making 5 fives, you make 4 fours. Instead of paying 7, he's cost 6. So it's just a really good guy in our deck. He also helps us trigger some of our draw cards. Uh, so. Uh, one of the infamous win conditions for landfall now is a Skewed Swarm. If you guys don't know what this does, it is a 2 and a green with landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control 6 or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Skeet Swarm instead. So, really sick. Uh, if you, you're always gonna have 6 or more lands with this deck. Uh, as soon, it's basically what this card does is you play a land, make a Skeet Swarm, play another land, you have two skew swarms in play. The two that are gonna see the land, they're gonna make two more skew swarms because they're gonna copy themselves. So you have four skew swarms. You pay another land. Those four skew swarms see the land. They trigger. They make four more. So you have eight. So you see what's going on here? Every land you play, they just double. Really good because it really pairs with uh, this next card, Terror of the Peaks, three and a red red, flying. Expose your points, cast the target terror piece, cost an additional 3 life to cast. Uh, the main text here says, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, terror the piece deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So you have like a thousand seed storms, you get to do a thousand damage, you have 5 elementals, 5, 5, five elementals, that's 25 damage you get to do, so this is extremely good. Uh, let, me, let me charge my laptop because it's about to die. Alright, 
right, so the next card here on our list is gonna go ahead and be Purpose God of the Forge. So this guy really pairs well with our tokens because what he says is he has indestructible. As long as his devotion is less than five, Perforce isn't a creature. He's never going to be a creature because there's not enough green or red permanents in the deck to make him a creature. The important text here says whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Perforce does two damage to each opponent. So we have, uh, for example, we have our eight ski swarms that enter the battlefield. Uh, we do get to do 16 damage to each opponent. Uh, we have Omnath in the field. Play a land, make a 5 5. Each opponent takes two damage. Play another land. I'm going to enter just make another two damage to everybody. It's a really good finisher. Now, we have all these spells, right? We're going to need a way to get to all of our wind conditions and, you know, get a little faster. So we have our tutors coming up. Uh, first up is Gamble. It is a red. For search your library for a card, put that card into your hand and discard a card at random, shuffle your library. It hurts to see our card we tutored for go to our grave, but because of our all of our grave recursion, it's not so bad. We can always get it back. Finale of Devastation. This guy is really cool. So it's a uh, X for green green. It's a really good finisher. Uh, search your library and our graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less and put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haste until end of turn. So if you have like 10 tokens on the field, uh, use finale for 10. All those tokens get plus 10 plus 10. And trample and stuff like that. So you just you just go ahead and win the game with that basically. You just spread the damage. Now and the next card here is gonna go ahead and be a Crop Rotation. This card is really good. Uh, it's a green that says it's an additional cost to this spell. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for a land card. Put that card into the battlefield and shuffle your library. So this card searches for any land you need. And let's say uh, enough that helps trigger you know, your landfall ability. So you play a, f a, a forest. Uh, you Tap it to cast crop rotation. Crop rotation searches you for another land. Preferably, I like searching for, you know, another fetch land. And then if the fetch land enters untapped, sack the fetch land, get a basic, and uh, that's three tri land landfall triggers in one go without having to just play another land. So that's pretty strong in my opinion. Sylvan Scrawling is our next tutor. It says, search your library for a land card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This card is pretty cool. Um, I am debating on swapping it out for another card uh, called uh, Traverse the Ovenol, which basically is a green and a sorcery. It says, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Uh, so it's almost the same thing. The only difference is that Sylvan searches for any base, any any land, or Traverse the Oven Wall searches for any basic. But here's the difference where I, where the reason why I want to add it is because Traverse the Oven Wall has Delirium. If there, and basically what that says is that uh, at least for this de Delirium ability it says that there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard. And instead, search your library for a creature or a land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library. So. Uh, that's why I think it's better. It costs one less, and it can even tutor you for your win cons because they're creatures. So I don't see why I wouldn't want to add that, but I'll find out uh, in the future. I'll put uh, I'll put the deck list in the description below. So if I happen to make that change, you know you guys will see it there in the deck list. Now you guys are wondering, well, with all these spells, how are we gonna get to all of our tutors, our win conditions, and ramp spells? Well. Let's start with our draw now, which I think is pretty much the uh, conclusion to our deck bit tech here. So we have uh, Sylvan Library, it's a colorless and a green. It says, uh, for, it's a free ability that says, draw two cards, then choose any two cards in your hand drawn this turn. Uh, for each of those cards, pay four life, 
or put that card back on top of your library. This is use this ability only during your draw phase and once each turn. So on your draw step, you go ahead and draw two additional cards. And depending if you like those cards or not, you get to pay four life to keep them for each card. If you don't like them, you can put them back on top of your library in any order. It doesn't specify what order, so you can put them back however you want. And you still only net the one card. So, if you wanted to, you can just keep... Uh, uh, instead of you keeping your first draw, you can keep one of the other ones and then put the other back. Uh, next one is Wheel of Fortune. Tuna Red. All players must discard their hand and then draw seven new cards. This card's really good. If you have no cards in hand, you have all play you haven't played all your last return, you're running out of gas. Just do this, you refuel. Next one is Gorex Uprising. Two in a green. When Gorex Uprising enters the battlefield, if you control a creature of power four or greater, which you will because of all math, draw a card. It also triggers for your elementals. It triggers for your 4-4 four four beast that you make off the landfall trigger off of that other creature. And that creature itself. Uh, second text says creatures you control have trample. Whenever, uh, and then the third text says when a creature with power 4 greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So let's say you have Omnath in the field, you play a land, uh, you make a 5-5, five five, the 5-5 five five enters, Grux Uprising sees it, and you draw a card. So you draw a card almost every time you play land. Course of Crufix. Um, he's not exactly a draw card, but he is, I, I would consider him a uh, value, um, or card advantage actually, because he is a colors and a green green. His first ability says, play with the top card of your library revealed. Second text says, you may play lands from the top of your library. Third text says, whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So you beginning life, and you get to play lands on the top of your library, because it, that really helps, because sometimes you have no cards in hand, or no cards to shoot a four with any uh, essence sorcery, so Cursor helps out in that regard. So he's almost like Oracle Moldai. He just doesn't have the play to show under turn. Horn of Greed. This card, um, I guess it's arguable, because some people don't like it when they're giving their opponents card draw. That says, uh, whenever it's a 3-drop artifact, whenever a player uh, plays a land card, a land, that, uh, that player draws a card. So if your opponents play a land, they get a draw card. But the, it benefits you more because you're playing multiple lands a turn. It doesn't trigger off each land entry. So like, let's say you play a fetch land, you play your land for turn, you draw off Horn of Greed because you played it. But if you sack that fetch land and the land enters, it won't trigger Horn of Greed because you have to play that. So that's why the um, the other cards that allow you to play extra lands for turn matter with this card. But aside from that, that's all it does. Uh, Valakut Exploration. This guy's pretty cool. It's a two and a red enchantment. Landfall. When the land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. Now, fret not. You, this card is not exiled forever. You do get to get it back. The second text says, at the beginning of your end step, if there are cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard, then Valakut Exploration deals that much damage to each opponent. So, this is good because if you were to do something like Scape Shift, or Spell Letter Reclamation, or play any fetch lands, or play you know, lands in general, if you were to happen to get like 10 lands, or like 6 lands to enter in one turn, this will trigger six times, ten times, and then if you just decide not to cast anything, those, you know, cards go to the grave and it pings your each opponent for one damage for each card that goes to the grave with the Valakut Explosion. So, really good in my opinion. And then we have Elemental Bond. Um, this one's a little bit like Gurk's Uprising, it just doesn't have that much of a cool text other than the part that it draws you cards. It says, when a creature enters, uh, with power 3 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So, exact same thing, it's just that it doesn't draw a card upon ETB or give an example, just draw a card for a creature that enters with 3 or less. 
Well, it's Legacy, so. This card's not too bad. It's a, it nets you five cards. You pay colors and a green as long as you control. Sorry, as long as it has an additional cost to life's legacy, sacrifice a creature. And then, the second text says draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. So, this card is helpful because it, it sacks an elemental. And because I'm not, if he's on the field, you just get to do three damage or something. If he's not, I mean, if you have a 5-5 five five still out, you can just use this to draw five cards. Easy peasy. What's cool about this is that the sacrifice is a cost to the spell. So if someone wants to be like, oh, in response, I'm going to kill your creature so you don't draw anything, that doesn't work that way. Um, they cannot kill your creature in response to you sacrificing your life because it's part of the cost. So you still draw your cards. And then our last card in our deck is Tireless Tracker. It's a tuna green. Uh, it is a human scout creature. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get to investigate. Um, basically, what investigating says is that you create an artifact that says that's uh, called the clue token, and that clue token says, "Pay two, sacrifices artifact, draw a card." There's gonna be times where you run out of gas and you have nothing else to do, so those clue tokens do really come in handy. Um. This, it does have a second text, but it doesn't really matter, honestly, just that first text. The second text is whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a 1-1 counter on Tireless Tracker. So yeah, that is my Omnath uh, Locus of Rage deck tech. Well, that's pretty much it for it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is I would say this deck, I would, I would consider it optimized. It, it slaps pretty hard at my LGS, and they all play... Uh, pretty aggressively so uh that's uh, that's all i have to say about it it's uh, pretty strong um if i i'm gonna go ahead and mention a few recommendations as to what to add and to maybe power it down if you wanted to or to make it maybe make it stronger so if you if it's if, if that's all you wanted to see you know you can leave now but the rest of the video is going to be for something like that um I did mention earlier about a card called uh, Amulet of Vigor. If you want to, it doesn't really, it helps, but I wouldn't say it's recommended to stay. Because I mean, you're just relying on this card for a land to enter the battle tap and untap it to use it right away. So I don't really, I don't really like relying on cards like that. But this, when this card's out, it really does keep your turn going. So if you wanted to make this deck stronger, I would probably swap this out for something like Mana Vault. Um, that's probably my recommendation. I wouldn't say it's too po uh, too important, but you know, to each your own. Now, if you guys want to change some other stuff like the Soul Rings or Mana Crypts, um, I would probably put in something like a, a Rampant Growth or something, or um, Three Visits, or some other kind of two drop spell that looks for you know a basic land type or something like that um that way you could just keep going another card i would recommend because i know we, we saw tear of the peaks earlier you can always change it out for something like a warstorm surge it's a five and a red enchantment this is whenever a creature enters the badger field under control it deals damage to it's uh, equal to its power to target creature or player so it's, it could be another win condition if you want to you can put this in the deck but I took it out because it costs too much and uh, I don't like it taking care of my spending my turn with casting that I mean sure it costs one more than uh, the creature but um I don't know it's just it's kind of hard to make a card for it so I took it out and replaced it with that uh, if, you, if you do want to play additional lands I would probably put in uh, a we were sort of I took it out of my deck because uh, Give it something, can we come out? He will only allow me to play extra lands. So that's it. He wouldn't do much for me, so I took him out. Another thing I'll probably do is uh, if you want more card draw or something, you can put in an explorer. You know, to play additional land and draw a card. You can put, if you want another, you know, explosive vegetation kind of card, Circassia's Route's kind of cool. It does the exact same thing. Or if you have an issue with people countering your shit, uh, I would recommend a uh, Baseju who shelters all. It protects your instants and sorceries. Comes in tap though. 
but uh, when you get to use it, it says pay to life, you add one mana to your mana pool. If this mana is spent on instant or sorcery, this spell cannot be countered. So this is really good for a lot of heavy instant or sorcery kind of decks like this one or anything else. But I took it out because no one really counters your ramp spells, you know? So <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys like my recommendations um, and uh, all of that jazz. If you have any uh, recommendations yourself, Go ahead and let me know. Uh, this video is uploaded on August 4th, 2021, so I'm pretty sure if you guys are watching this, it'll be in the future and stuff. So I'm pretty sure a lot of changes have happened. And if there is, and there's stuff that I like, you know, I'll put it in my uh, deck list that I'm gonna put in the description below, and then I'll probably leave stuff and recommendations and stuff like that. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching, and uh, have a good day.